What's up, it's your guy, Engineer Mojo, back again with another how to pass an exam video. If you haven't seen my video before on how to pass a PE exam, check it out down below in the video description. If you have, thanks for the view. It's much appreciated. This video is gonna be how to pass the California Seismic and Surveying Specific Exams. If you haven't seen my videos before, you're in for a treat. I give some good info, clear, concise, to the point. So with that said, let's get it started. For the first tip, I'm gonna lay out the exact resources I use to self-study for these two exams. Now, to start it off, it's not an ad for any type of company or study website. If they do wanna to sponsor to me, hit me up. But to get back to the point, uh, this is just what I use to personally self-study for the exam. I'm gonna start it off with showing you I use the Heiner Seismic Design Review Workbook. This workbook has uh, breakdown of the chapters in ASCE and IBC of the seismic chapters uh, has also practice questions after every chapter also has longer practice questions that are useful and hits different topics and it has two practice exams very good I love this workbook it helped me a lot to get through the exams but this is not the only thing I use for the seismic exam I really wanted a lot of practice problems I wanted to get my speed up when solving the seismic problems. So I also went to EET. EET is kind of a competitor of Heiner and his, and his program. I went to them and I got their practice exams. Uh, this comes with three practice exams. Very good practice exams. I went through this two times. For the serving portion of the exam, I relied heavily on PPI, I must admit. And that's more because of ignorance of other resources that were available to me. But with that being said, I passed the exam on the first try, so PPI did a good job. For them, I got the California Civil Surveying Reference Manual. I believe this is very recently created, very new from PPI. My only beef with this manual is that it really doesn't cover every topic you'll see on the surveying exam. But from what I've read, very few resources will. It's just a very wild exam. No shade on the people who create that exam just kind of out there questions sometimes that I thought were a little weird, but a good resource. I wanted extra practice problems. So I went and got PPI's practice exams for the California surveying exam. Uh, this comes with two exams. They're pretty in-depth, uh, pretty realistic to what you'll see on the exam. Again, I self-study. You can take a class as well. EET offers a class. Heiner offers a class. There's tons of classes for surveying out there, I believe and other resources so do what makes sense for yourself but these are what I use to pass the exam. The second tip that I'm going to give to you is to make a schedule and plan how you're going to attack this exam. Now this is a two-part type schedule thing. If you are familiar with my PE exam video you know I talk about the schedule and I harp on that a lot. Same thing here. Make a schedule. I have an example down below of an Excel sheet of a schedule that I used. You want to break it out by day, by hour, and by how many problems or what chapter you're going to attack. So don't just say I'm going to study for on Tuesday for two hours. Say I'm going to study on Tuesday for two hours on horizontal curves and I'm going to do 15 practice problems. That way you're holding yourself accountable to tangible goals. You got to have tangible goals that you can actually see and act on. Now that was the first part to scheduling. The second part to scheduling has to do with the freedom in which you can schedule the exams. Now that's also part of the strategy. The California Board gives you a lot of flexibility in scheduling the exam. It's a continuously given exam broken out into four quarters, so it's semi-continuous I should say. Schedule the exam on a day or weekend that you feel will give you the best opportunity to pass. So if you know you have a hectic schedule Monday through Wednesday, don't schedule it during that time. Schedule it either Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, or vice versa. If you want to go into the weekend feeling calm and relaxed, schedule it Monday or Tuesday. That way you can kind of get through your week and relax on the weekend. So make sure you use the flexibility in the actual exam scheduling to your advantage. I also took the exams at 12 in the afternoon. I just felt like I wanted to wake up, eat breakfast, chill, and then go take the exam. That's what worked for me. Find what works for you. Whatever you choose, make sure you take advantage of the schedule. Tip number three, very simple. Practice problems, many of them. Do them, 
night, day, whatever your study schedule is, just do practice problems. Tip number four is go into the exam with a strategy. I came to the realization that I'm not gonna get every problem correct. I'm not gonna to attempt to get every problem correct. I need to get about 30 to 35 questions correct on these exams to pass. Don't quote me on that. This is just what I've read in threads. And if you look back in the history of when they were giving out the test results by percentage, you'll see that the passing percentage was around 55 to 60%. So with that, I already had it in my mind, okay, I'm gonna focus on the questions I know. I'm gonna skip the ones that I don't know off the bat. And the goal was after I went through the first iteration of answering questions that I knew would be quick and easy and skipping the hard ones, I was gonna to try to have 25 to 30 questions answered. And hopefully after those 25 to 30 were answered, and I hope I would have about an hour and a half left to answer the rest of the questions. The second go around, I went back and I answered some more questions that were a little tougher that I thought I knew how to do, I answered those. And then at the end of that session, there were still questions left that I didn't know how to do. I just made an educated guess, or I just made a complete guess, and, and just kept it moving. So again, go in there with the strategy. My strategy was answer easy ones, skip hard ones, go back, answer mid-level questions, skip hard ones, go back, attempt hard ones, or guess on the hard ones. But at the end, answer every question. Make sure you bubble in because you don't get penalized for wrong answers. But just don't go in there blind without a strategy. Go in there with the strategy, and I guarantee it'll at least help you feel more confident leaving the exam. The last tip, tip number five. This tip is pretty simple. Google is your friend, or Yahoo, or if you're a 90s, 2000 baby, ask Jeeves, whatever you want to use. Google. Google different threads, different forums that have people who are talking about this exam, whether it's the serving or the sizing. People are talking about their experiences, they're talking about tips, they're talking about different resources they use. Use all of them. You can't go wrong with reading as much as you can about people's experiences on the exam. Down below, I found a resource from this website that talked about the surveying exam. I only did to give a breakdown of good resources to use, but it also gave a link, which is down below, to NCEES's cheat sheet, essentially, for the surveying exam. This is NCEES, their equation sheet for the surveying, actual surveying exam, for the California-specific exam. You don't need everything that's in that equation workbook, but for the first 10 pages is what you need. It gives you a breakdown of pretty much every equation that you'll come across or that you'll need. That was very useful. Again, Google, Bing, Yahoo, whatever. Use it, search, read, come to your own conclusions about what will work best for you. But the point I stress is don't limit your options and your resources. Read everything, Google everything, do as much as you can. Read about people's experiences. Everything you read hopefully will give you a better sense of what to expect on the exam. Hopefully it will calm your nerves. These are not easy exams, but they're very, very passable. You should not be stressing about these exams. So those are the five tips that I use to pass these exams. If you have any questions, hit me up down below in the questions, any comments, please comment, please like, please share. I just try to share what I've used to pass exams. My YouTube is all about helping people and passing on knowledge that somebody passed to me. I'm essentially just trying to pay it forward and help somebody else. Somebody help me, threads, different comments, different tips, and all that combining it to what I use and giving it back out to other folks so that hopefully it helps them. Any questions that you have, ask down below. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm out.